The Mole Circle is a chambered Neolithic tomb. It's about 6,000 years old and it's one of about 10 similar monuments spread throughout the Isle of Man. It's a monument which is, if you like, a cemetery. It's a place where a community, an extended community of, of perhaps interrelated families, would bury their dead and demonstrate their connection with the landscape. These kinds of monuments were only capable of being constructed once the Neolithic period uh, started. Neolithic period is marked by the rise of agriculture and it's about making use of the landscape and the resources of the landscape in such a way that you have both spare time and spare resource, manpower most particularly. In earlier periods it was a more hand-to-mouth existence and you didn't have that luxury of the spare time in which to construct sites of this kind. These chambered tombs are such a feature of Neolithic archaeology. Amongst the most distinctive monuments of any era in the British Isles. They're sometimes called megaliths and the name gives the game away. They are constructed out of massive stones, hence megalith. I'm actually sat in the entranceway to one of these chambers, one of six chambers that we've got here at the Mole Circle. And the way that this worked and the way that it's laid out is absolutely unique. There's nothing else quite like the Mole Circle anywhere in the British Isles. We can't tell what kind of ritual these individuals would have uh, undertaken in order to uh, prepare somebody for, for burial. What we do know is that the people buried here were cremated before burial. Their remains gathered together in a small pottery vessel and that vessel would be placed in one of these chambers as the form of burial. This cemetery would be opened up at intervals whenever required and someone would come in through the passageway just to my left here and place the, the pot, the urn, uh, within this chamber. And through time it would probably become quite crowded. We have no idea how many individuals would have been buried in a site like this, but I can see this site having a lifespan of several centuries. Although the burial chambers that we can see are very, very substantial, they are comparatively a, a minor part of the monument that was here originally. The big stones, of course, are almost impossible to transport away, it would require a great deal of, of uh, effort to do so. But there's much, much smaller material, which is more vulnerable to being removed and used to build walls in the surrounding fields. And that's what's happened here. Originally, this site was completely covered by a massive mound of stones, a cairn if you like, it's a term we, we quite often use. And with all that material, it was necessary to contain it. And what we have here is the base of a wall. It was only found as recently as the 1970s. This wall would have stood, we don't know quite how high, maybe a, a, a metre or so above its, above its current height, and it would have retained an enormous body of stone that has simply vanished in the intervening millennia. This mound of stone, the cairn, would have completely obscured the chambers that are behind me, but they would have had the effect of making this site much, much more prominent than it is today. It's unknowable just how big the cairn here at the Mole Circle was originally, but I think we can expect that it stood at least as high as I stand. 
We know that most of that material was taken away, but some of it still survives in the interior of the circle around about me. Beneath this turf, there are still layers and layers of stone above the bedrock of Mole Hill. And that cairn retained by the wall would have completely covered these chambers. They would have been roofed with other slabs and the chambers would have been completely invisible from the outside save for the entrance passageways that are around the circumference of the circle. The floor of the chambers seem to have had quite a large quantity of quartz stone incorporated into them. And it is a feature that quartz is associated with death and with burial. We find this in all periods and we also find it in other tombs and other monuments uh, associated with death elsewhere in the British Isles. And it's perhaps significant that right at the centre of the circle we have still this quite sizeable quartz boulder and it may be that this is part of the original burial that brought this cemetery to this location. Interestingly, the Mull Circle is not positioned right on the summit of this almost flat-topped hill. Instead, it's positioned on a terrace overlooking and dominating the slopes to the north. In the fields just a few hundred metres away, stone axes and flint tools from the Neolithic period have been discovered. And perhaps the community responsible for their manufacture were also responsible for the construction of this, their graveyard. The Mull Circle also looks out further afield and would have been visible from the sea down near Bradder Head and also from much of the south of the island, perhaps as far as the central valley between Peel and Douglas. If you're very, very sharp sighted and you're traveling down the west coast in the area of Dalby, you would even be able to see the monument from there through the Gap of Fleshig. Six thousand years ago, our ancient forebears built this monument as a place, a house for the dead. Far more permanent than any structure they built for themselves to live in. And it's a tribute to the effort and the resource that they invested in that, that we still have the skeleton of the Mull Circle here today. I think it really does give us the most wonderful connection with the past across all those millennia.